Blessings, family of God, blessings. I've been wanting to share all the things that God has been putting on my heart um, since last year, since even before that, um, and just how it's all coming together. And I just want to share this information with you guys so that y'all can kind of understand what's going on right now, what God is doing right now, and we can come into alignment with what God is doing right now. So this is a very important word, a very important information for the body of Christ to know and to come into alignment with so we can be sure that we are uh, speaking, declaring, and moving in the will of the Lord. So I want to share some things that we have as a body of Christ to um, look forward to, some things that God is doing and the ways that he's about to move and how he's been working behind the scene um, for justice. Right now, um, God is bringing justice. God is bringing justice in the land and he is going to expose. He's been exposing. Um, he's been exposing uh wickedness in high places and he's been exposing it so that the body of Christ can come into a uh, partnership with him and begin to pray that this these injustices this wickedness in high places that these things would begin to crumble and instead a lot of us have been seeing it what what all the wickedness and we've just kind of been backbiting we've been kind of um, arguing with each other um, wanting to expose and just expose but I'm God is not looking to expose to cause division to cause strife he's looking to expose wicked things so that we can then come in and intercede so not for us to point the finger, not for us to um, have something to talk about or to be entertained with. It's so that we can begin to pray, we can begin to intercede and begin to help his will be done on earth. And I just want to share um, these scriptures on justice that the Lord gave me and how he's bringing justice to our nation and that we need to come into alignment with him. He's going to be doing some uh, big things here soon. The whole world's going to take notice. This nation's going to take notice. And it's because God is bringing justice. And we need to pray this thing through. And this is what the scriptures um, that he gave me on justice. It's Deuteronomy 16 verses 18. 18 um, no, I'm sorry. It's um, just one verse that I'm going to speak out of there. And it's Deuteronomy 16. It says, follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. Okay, this is the land. If we look at it on a bigger scale, the land of America is the land in which God has given us. And it says for us to follow justice and justice alone, so that we may live and possess the land the Lord our God is given us. Okay, so we need to follow justice. We need to support. This is not about Democrat or Republican. It's not about uh, Biden or Trump. It's about justice. It's about being on God's side. It's about standing and praying and interceding and being uh, someone who stands with the side of justice, which is God's side. Okay, and God wants to bring justice to the land, to this land. He he does not delight in bringing judgment. He is very patient. He's very, very patient because he doesn't want to um, tear people down. But sometimes he has to do that to get their attention, to get a nation's attention. Okay, here's another scripture on justice. It says, by justice, a king gives a country stability. But those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. OK, so we need to be praying that we have a leader that is for justice. OK, I'm not talking about a perfect person. You know, if you look at Esther and God has brought me back to Esther, Esther has been on my spirit for the last few years. But if you look at Esther, 
She was in a pagan land, okay? She was she was in um the king of of Persia was very wicked and he was one of the greatest rulers at that time. He was the most powerful kingdom at that time. Okay? But God used Esther to have favor when the people of God were about to be completely wiped out. He put Esther in the appointed place to bring justice to his people and favor to his people, to save his people, right? So we need to pray. We need to pray for a, a, a someone to lead this country and who will stand in justice, for justice, okay? So what we are to expect coming forward, there's going to be some crazy shifts within the, um, within the political realm. Okay, and we just need to pray for justice. We need to stand for righteousness and we need to be prepared because what is about to take place is more exposing. Okay, look at last year. Was it that was when uh, Jeffrey Epstein, I believe, was last year where he got exposed and that pet. Ch okay, that's huge. We need to understand the 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 hugeness of that happening. Jeffrey Epstein is one of the one of the elites main child pedophilia uh providers okay and he got exposed he got exposed he got locked away and he killed himself okay and only god knows what really uh happened with that but that is a huge victory that is a huge um victory a huge blow to the enemy a huge blow to the enemy's uh networking a huge blow to what the enemy is doing. So the children, God is wanting to set the children free. He's wanting to um, set us all free. Those who are standing with righteousness and justice. Okay, so we had a huge, God made a huge dent in the enemy's plans when he exposed that. And going into this year, we're going to see more exposure. We're going to see more people in high places being exposed. We're going to see more people coming forth with truth. It only takes one person to come forth with information that will completely dismantle and begin to collapse the enemy's plans, okay? And I understand that as watchmen, we can see all these scriptures on end times, right? We see, like, I know in 2013, 2014, I was seeing all these scriptures on end times, and I thought it was that time already, right? And so, but God wants us to know it's not that time yet. He still has things to do. He still wants to set the captives free and expose what's done in the dark. Um, I want to share this... Um, this word okay he gave me the word liberty um the end of last year the word liberty and it means um let's let's look at the scripture for it the scripture for it is second corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 and it says now the lord is a spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty okay in this nation there is strong believers there's intercessors there's people raising up i've seen god's people raise up against wickedness we're seeing that the enemy is being dismantled we're seeing that the enemy is being exposed this is our time to move forward this is our time to press in with the things of god with prayer with bringing down the walls of injustice the walls of wickedness the 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 wickedness in high places okay and the spirit of the Lord is on this nation and the spirit of the Lord is not done with this nation yet. And this nation is very significant and very important to the entire world. We are like a, a light. We are um, the one really standing. Once this nation falls, we are known as the nation uh, who is free, freedom, where freedom can reign. Okay, and God made it that way. I'm not saying everything is perfect in this nation. We know that Every time God lifts something up to be a blessing to the world, to be a blessing to the people, we know that the enemy also has his people there ready to use it and manipulate it for evil. Okay, so I'm not saying that this nation is perfect or its foundation is perfect, but our God and the God who had has a destiny for this nation and is not done with it yet 
is still on the throne and he still has a purpose for us. Let's look at the definition of liberty. It says the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. Okay, the Lord gave me this last year, this word liberty, that he's going, he's trying to bring us into a state of being free from all this wickedness that has been going on and uh, because of what's going on in the political um, places, okay? Um, he also gave me the word vindicator, okay? Vindicator, vindicator, a person who clears someone of blame or suspicion, a person who shows or proves something to be right, reasonable, or justified. The Lord told me last year when he gave me these words, liberty and vindicator, that he's going to vindicate his people. He is going to vindicate his people. His people have been really going through it, have been in the battle, have been in the warfare. Okay, he's not going to leave us. He, We're not defeated. Okay, he's going to give us victory. That's what we have to look forward to. Now, with that victory is going to come some shaking. How he's going to get us to the promised land, how he's going to get us to fulfilling that destiny, um, that he has on our life to bring in a great harvest to see revival. We're going to see revival. We're going to see some huge things. We're going to see um, people come low that have been using bribery, that have been using deception, that has been using partiality and favoritism and having their own agendas and wanting to make their own uh, plans and purposes that are vain and not the agenda of God. Those people are going to be brought low. And the people who have been going through the fire, who have been uh, not compromising, even though they have, they refuse to compromise. They refuse to take the shortcuts. They refuse to do things that weren't of God to, to get a platform or to, um, you know, do what God is calling them to do. Those people are going to be lifted up. They're going to be vindicated. Okay. They're going to have liberty because God is going to do it for us. Okay. Look at God wants us to have a heart of intercession. Look at this scripture. God gave me this scripture last year, December 14th, 2020. And I didn't even know till I went through my notes before I came on here because there's just so much. And I pray that God just helps me just to, I know this is a lot of information and it's kind of all over the place because it's a lot, it's a lot. But he gave me this word, heart of intercession, okay? It's Second Chronicles 34, verse 27. It says, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people. And because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Okay, because our hearts were responsive and we humbled ourselves before God when we heard what he spoke against this nation. He has spoken judgment. He has spoken against the wickedness in this land. But he's done it so that his intercessors would then raise up and have a and and have a heart of humility to pray and intercede and say not yet, Lord. Not yet, Lord. Not yet, Lord. And he's heard us. He's heard us praying weeping, crying out for this nation, crying out for the children, crying out for, for the children who are captive. He's hurt and he's going to vindicate his people. Okay. So God is, so what we have to look forward to coming forward is some big things happening. It's going to shake this nation. It's going to shake this world. It's, there's some things that are going to come out some um, exposing that's going to come out in the political place, um, some some arrests that are going to take place, some um, ugly things that are going to come to the forefront and expose everything that's been going on under the rug and being pushed under the rug for so long because of money and bribery and all this demonic networking that the enemy has been doing. 
that stuff is going to continue to just be put out there on the forefront and people are not going to be able to deny it anymore. And so we need to be ready to speak, not attack, not come in pride and say, I told you so, or, you know, I glow and throw it in their face. We need to stay focused. I see so many people bashing other people, talking about false prophets, talking about, um, you know, judgment and this nation is, is judged by God. This nation has a lot of believers in it. This nation has a lot of believers in it. God is not going to uh, be through with this nation as long as we're standing and interceding and doing what we're supposed to be doing with a repentant heart, okay? He's not done with us. So we need to stop, we need to stop uh, casting judgment. We need to stop not speaking in love. Focus. We need to focus. If we're saying, you know, false prophet or told you you were wrong or um, all these people were crazy or whatever, all this stuff or Black Lives Matters and, you know, all this stuff is just a distraction. What are you doing and what are you using your mouth for? What are you using your time for? It should be prayer. It should be praying God's will be done for this nation. Okay, it should be praying that justice would be served in this nation. God wants justice. He is the God of justice, but he needs us to work through. He needs us to, to come alongside him and partner so that he can do what he wants to do with this nation. And the enemy is trying to steal the destiny of this nation. And he's trying to steal the destiny of many nations in the world. So we have to stand. We have to stand and say no. He's not going to steal it right now. Not while I'm here. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to pray. I'm going to use my voice to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. I'm not going to tear down my neighbor. I'm not going to tear down. I'm not going to worry about false prophets or wrong prophets or uh, all the division that's going on. Get on your knees and pray and come into alignment with God. He's releasing strategies to us. I want to share this, this book here. This book, the Lord led me to it about two years ago, okay? And this is like all this stuff that's been happening, God has been preparing. He's been working behind the scenes. So if you're not aware of God's agenda, of God's plan, of what God is doing, if you're not seeing it clearly and you have bitterness in your heart and you're talking down to other people, then you need to just repent and, and refocus, Okay, so this book, it's called Committed to Conquer. And I went into the bookstore two years ago. I was on my lunch break. I had some free time. I said, God, I'm going to go to the used bookstore. I'm going to go in there. I need you to show me what you need me to learn. I need some more training. Show me the books you want me to learn. I go to uh, the bookstore. I get in there. I find this book. And I'm immediately led to it. So I buy it. And turns out what it, it's all about is a spirit. It's called spiritual mapping. And it says on here, redeeming your city by strategic intercession, redeeming your city by strategic intercession. This is God's agenda right now. This is his plan is for us to redeem this nation and, and the territories to take territory for the Lord. Look at my shirt right here. It says, I am commissioned to take territory for his kingdom. Numbers 27. That's the plan of the Lord right now is that we take territory for his kingdom. So this book is all about spiritual mapping. And what that is, is where you take your territory and you begin to do research of the people, of its history, of its spiritual history, of its political history, and you start to uh, take notes and figure out what it is oppressing, what the enemy is using to oppress that territory. So a lot of the territory in my area that God has me in, a lot of the, the, the main oppression is witchcraft. Witchcraft. So you can then begin to dismantle those strongholds within a territory, within your territory, by knowing what's oppressing the people. So God wants us to begin to uh, have a prayer network. 
this is what God has been speaking to me and just uh, releasing to me is a prayer network. He's trying to get the body of Christ to have a prayer network. We know that the demons and uh, the demonic realm has a demonic network. They work together as a team to take territory, to take regions and cities and whole nations by working together in a demonic network to bring a territory into its power. So God wants us to counteract that by having prayer networks, working together as a team. This book, Commitment to Conquer, will share a lot of insight on that, how to work as a prayer team and have prayer networking so that we can dismantle the strongholds over us, our city, our nation, and the world, over territories that God assigns us to, so this is what God is doing, okay? So we need to come into alignment with what God is doing um, and stop calling people false prophets. Wait till the whole plan of God is um, revealed and it's going to be revealed to us within the next month. This month I find significant because this month is Purim, which goes back to Esther and how God redeemed and saved his people. The law was set. The king could not even overturn the law that had been set that all the Jews would die. So the Lord flipped that regardless because he is God and God over everything. And God was able to save his people, redeem his people. And um, we know that Haman got hung on his own, uh, what is it called? Little hang, you know, his own noose. He got hung, right? So God is doing the same thing for us. This month is Purim. It is the Feast of Joy. They call it the Feast of Joy. So I believe that we're going to see some things come out this month. It's February 25th when Purim is. I believe we're going to see some some, some really uh, disturbing things come out this month. Um, we're going to see people in high places being exposed. And it's going to cause a lot of chaos. But for the people of God... Because we know beforehand what God is doing and what God is orchestrating, we will have joy and we will have an expectation of what's to come. We know that this is just one of the things that one of the many things that has to be done in order for God's plan to be fulfilled. It's going to get ugly. Um, people, it's going to cause conflict. We have to be re ready to stand firm in love with um boldness and be courageous be loving not emotional not emotion led not frustrated and, and, and aggravated we need to pray for peace patience words of wisdom um faith so that we can uh be a solution when this stuff comes because when this stuff comes out in the government and the political realm when this wickedness con continues to be released and brought to the forefront, it's going to mess some things up. We're looking at coming into an economic collapse. We're looking into coming even more into an economic uh, crisis. Um, so we need to be mentally prepared for that, okay? But God is going to sustain his people. There's people that he has already released finances to and is going to release more finances to in order to sustain the people of God. Okay, so if you're not someone, if you're worried about your finances right now, trust that God is going to provide, whether it be from someone else um, blessing you or whether he gives you uh, supernatural um, finances. But don't be afraid of what you're about to see because we're going to see things shake. It's going to look chaotic. It's going to look like we are in trouble, deep trouble. But this stuff has to happen because the wicked have to come down. The wicked have to be exposed. So this is part of God's plan. He has already made provisions for us. He's going to take care of us. Do not worry. Like I said, Perm is the feast of joy. And so God wants us to have joy. He wants us to have joy when we see the wicked being exposed and righteousness coming forth. Okay, and um, he is going to do it. He is going to do it. He's given me so much confirmation that he is going to do it and that his people need to um, stop fighting against each other. A kingdom divided, you know, cannot stand. So we got to 
we got to repent. We got to come into unity. We got to come into one, one accord. Okay. So stop with the false prophets and let's, let's pray. Let's get on our knees. Don't use your mouth to tear stuff down. Okay. This is another word. And this is a, a just scripture of what God told me because after, you know, Biden won, it looked, it was very discouraging for some of the people of God who, hear from the Lord and was like, we know that the Lord has told us that justice is coming and that breakthrough is coming. And yet it seemed, you know, what we see with our eyes didn't seem to align. So this is the word of encouragement and of confirmation that God is not done. We're not done here. And like I said, this is not about a political party. This is not about, there is wickedness in both the democratic and the republican side and god is going to clean it up okay so this is not about uh republican democratic it's not about trump uh or biden none of that it's about what god is saying okay so let's focus in on what god is saying so this is the word um he gave me this on january 21st 2021 and this was confirmation more it says are you really going to leave us god this is and and this is the heart of the people. I know this is how we feel, and especially after what happened on the uh, you know, with with the presidential, um, the new president and stuff. It says, "Are you really going to leave us, God? Would you turn your back on us, rejecting your people? We are yours, your very own. Will you? Will your anger smolder against us forever? Don't forget that we are your beloved ones. Wrap us back up." into your heart again for you chose us you brought us out of our slavery and bondage and made us your favored ones your zion people your home on earth turn your steps toward this devastation come running to bring your restoring grace to these ruins to what the enemy has done to just devastate your holy place they have come into the very midst of your dwelling place Roaring like beasts, setting up their banners to flaunt their conquest. Now everything is in shambles. They've totally destroyed it. Like a forest chopped down to the ground, there's nothing left. All of the beauty of the craftsmanship of the inner place has been ruined, smashed, broken, and shattered. They've burned it all to the ground. They violated your sanctuary. The very dwelling place of your glory and your name, they boasted. Let's completely crush them. Let's wipe out every trace of this God. Let's burn up every sacred place where they worship this God. We don't see any miraculous signs anymore. There's no longer a prophet among us who can tell us how long this devastation will continue. God, how much longer will you let this go on? and allow these barbarians to blaspheme your name. Will you stand back and watch them get away with this forever? Why don't you do something? You have the power to break in, so why would you hide your great power from us? Don't hold back, unleash your might and give them a final blow. You have always been and always will be my king. You are the mighty conqueror, working wonders all over the world. It was you who split the sea in two by your glorious strength. You smashed the power of Tainan, the sea monster. You crushed the might of Leviathan, the great dragon. Then you took the crumbs and fed them to the sharks. With your glory, you opened up springs and fountains. Then you spoke and the ever-flowing springs of Jordan dried up so we could cross over. You owned the day and the night. Sunlight and starlight call you creator. The four corners of the earth were formed by your hands and every changing season owes its beauty to you. Oh, Jehovah, don't ever forget how these arrogant enemies like fools have mocked your name. Lord, aren't you, aren't we your beloved dove that praises you? Protect us from these wild beasts who want to harm us. Don't leave us as lambs among wolves. You can't abandon us after all we've been through. Remember your promises to us, for darkness covers the land, giving the violent ones a hiding place. Don't let these insults continue. Can't you see that we are your downtrodden and oppressed people? 
Make the poor and needy into a choir of praise to you. Don't ignore these ignorant words, this continual mocking. Rise up, God. It's time to defend yourself from all of this. Never forget that your adversaries, what your adversaries are saying for their rage and uproar rise continually against you. It's time to stand up to them. Psalms 74, and this is Psalm 75. God, our hearts spill over with praise to you. We overflow with thanks for your name is the near one. All we want to talk about is your wonderful works and we hear your reply. When the time is ripe, I will arise and I will judge the world with perfect righteousness. Though I have set the earth firmly on its pillars, I will shake it until it totters and everyone's heart will tremble. Pause in the presence. God warns the proud. Stop your arrogant boasting. And he warns the wicked. Don't think for a moment you can resist me. Why would you speak with such stubborn pride? Don't you dare raise your fist against me. This I know. The favor that brings promotion and power doesn't come from anywhere on earth. For no one exalts a person but God, the true judge of all. He alone determines where favor rests. He anoints one for greatness and brings another down to his knees. A foaming cup filled with judgment mixed with fury is in his hands of the, is in the hands of the Lord Jehovah, full to the brim and ready to run over. He filled it up for the wicked and they will drink it down to the very last drop. But I will proclaim the victory of the God of Jacob. My melodies of praise will make him known. My praises will break the powers of wickedness while the righteous will be promoted and become powerful. Amen. It says, my praises will break the powers of wickedness while the righteous will be promoted and become powerful. This is what the word of the Lord says to his people. He has heard us cry. He has heard us intercede. He has heard our prayers. And so he is answering. He is answering and he's going to promote his righteous ones. It's going to look scary. It's going to look... um crazy what we're moving into but it's part of his plan he's got it all planned out don't let don't be afraid of what we're gonna see coming forward have joy because that joy is going to be a light to the nations when when things take place this next phase takes place this exposing takes place the world is gonna take notice and what god wants them to see on his people is that we are not afraid like the rest of the world, that we are not in fear like the rest of the world, but that we rejoice. Okay, this goes back to Purim and February 25th, that it is a feast of joy. He wants us to have joy and victory. He is going to provide and pour out so many blessings for his people. He's not done with this nation yet. I am someone who, as, as a watchman of God, I believe in end times. I believe that we are that generation. I believe we're going to see it, but it is not quite yet. There are things and destiny. There is destiny that still needs to be fulfilled with this nation and with the people of God in this nation. There are some amazing people of God in this nation and God is going to bring revival to the earth. He's going to bring a revival before the end. We are not there yet. What is that scripture um, that says, you know, um, there will be wars, um, wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. I feel like that's where we're at. And God wants us to know that he didn't bring us this far to stop now he didn't bring us this far to be defeated and to go into a time where we can't um do anything he has been equipping us training us we have been developed we have been matured we're coming into a place of maturity of boldness of faith of where we're really um have the courage and maturity to step out and be bold and be strong and to lead a revival People of God, y'all are going to lead revivals in your area, in your nation, in your territories, in your family, in your household. This is what God is doing right now. He's bringing restoration. So, And we have to get rid of any division. We have to get rid of any backbiting. We have to get rid of any resentment, bitterness. We have to get rid of speaking negativity out of our mouths, 
of tearing down one another. We have to forgive our family. We have to forgive our household. God is going to restore all things. He is going to bless us. He is going to use us in mighty ways. There is a glory that is about to hit the people of God. So in the midst of this uh, wickedness being brought down, in the midst of, of the, 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 the castles or, or what these mansions that the enemy has created they're about to fall the walls of the enemy of wickedness and righteousness they're about to come down crumbling and it's gonna be scary and it's gonna look a mess but the people of god are going to shine with the glory of god there is going to be a power and an anointing that the people of god are going to receive that we have not experienced yet that we have not experienced yet. And we're going to experience it on a bigger scale, on a larger scale, on a national scale, on a world scale. And these things are going to um, start happening. I also want to share this part that the God, God has been showing me uh, is about being innovative. Being innovative. God has really been highlighting having a business mindset and not a business worldly mindset. Not a mindset that wants to achieve worldly gain or worldly power or worldly influence or use or hoard up money or use the things of God to create uh, money and power for themselves. But he wants us to be innovative and creative and to uh, pray for inspiration of things that are going to be bring solutions to people. Businesses that are going to be kingdom businesses established by God himself that are going to bring solutions to the nation, to people. So I want to uh, just plant that in your heart for you to pray about that with God. God has led me to it and how he spoke this word to me in my heart um, that he was going to do this was through a show called... Um, the Food That Built America, I believe that's what it's called. It's on the History Channel. Uh, you can find it on Hulu too. But I have watched that at least 10 times. He showed me that documentary um, at the beginning of the shutdowns last year. And I knew God was speaking to me and saying, look, I'm going to use you and I'm going to use kingdom people to begin to create businesses, uh, create solutions um, to a lot of the issues that um, plague our nation. He wants to see the people in this nation and in the world be um, healthy. Um, you know, uh, to, to health is a big thing for God because there's so much corruption within the pharmaceuticals, within the, the doctor, you know, the, the, the medical industry, um, the health, the food, the quality of our food. So those are things that God has really been highlighting um, for me. Um, and, and what I want to try to invest in um, moving forward is just bringing uh, healthy foods, making foods available. Um, so I just want to plant that. If there's anyone on here um, that is feeling like God is speaking to you about a business, about um, uh, just taking a leap of faith and maybe investing in something or learning about something, he is, God is about to uh, do something with his people as far as uh, businesses, investing, um, creating uh, kingdom businesses that are going to be a blessing to people where we're going to be able to uh, help people, reach out to people and touch people's lives and, and introduce them to God and um, his goodness. So I want to share that too. And I know that this video is just like all over the place, but God, it, it's just been so much. Um, I also want to talk real quick about the promised land. God is bringing us into the promised land. How we get into the promised land is by following justice. Justice will lead us into the promised land. If we look back at that scripture, I believe that's what that scripture, um, one of the scriptures Okay, right here, justice. When we went over Deuteronomy 16, follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. That's the promised land. Okay, so how do we make it to our promised land right now? We are journeying to our promised land. The people of God, we are journeying to our promised land. God is bringing us into the promised land. How do we get there successfully? Through justice. We have to uh, do what is right in the eyes of God. We can't take shortcuts. We can't use God. We can't use him for our comfortability or for our bank account or we have to do what's right, okay? And a lot of times when we do what's right, it's the hard thing to do. It's a lot harder. 
I have cried so many times just crying because I see people who are taking shortcuts and I'm like, God, like, why? You know, why? They're, they're doing, you know, what I feel like God is calling me to do, but I can't obtain it because I don't have the resources. I don't have the connections. I don't have the, I'm only one person. And so I get grieved sometimes. And, but God is saying, no, like it may take longer to get to the promised land. It may take longer to start up that business. It may take longer to start up that uh, ministry. It may be the harder route, but it's the right way. When you take shortcuts, that is when the enemy, what did the enemy say? He tried to get God to bow down to him, Jesus to bow down to him. And he said, I will give you all of the kingdoms of the earth if you will just bow down to me, right? He tried to give, give Jesus a shortcut to being ruler of the earth when he was already creator, king, almighty, you know? And so... Don't look at people that you feel like have made it and, and like God has forgotten you. That is not the case. God is taking you on this journey to the promised land and he's taking you the long route because that route is going to refine you. It is pruning you. It is testing you. It is making you strong. It is making you holy. And so when you get to that place, the promised land, and in the promised land, it's full of abundance. It's going to overflow with abundance. It's more than you can even think. For those of you who have been really doing this thing with God, God is going to bless you. He is about to bless you no matter what it looks like coming up. He is going to bless you so much. And because you took the long route, because you allowed yourself to be refined, re pruned, tested, shaped. You didn't take the shortcuts. You didn't compromise. You didn't make relationships with shady people. He's going to bless you. And when you receive the promised land, when you receive the promise, you are not going to have it stolen from you. Because you have been tested and proven true. So when you get to that promised land, when you open that kingdom business, when you receive that kingdom breakthrough, when you receive financial uh, abundance, when the blessings of God start to overcome you and overpour on your life, remember God. Remember God. Do not forget. Do not become prideful. This is why you went through the process so that any pride in you could be sifted out. That's why it's been so hard. That's why you've been tested so greatly, opposed so greatly, because God knows where he's bringing you. And he knows the level of responsibility he's given you. Many people have fallen when they've gotten there. Many people have been perverted by pride, by promotion, by uh, their, their uh, fame, by money. Many have, many people of God, Many faithful people of God have fallen and God doesn't want that for you. So just know and remember that God is bringing us into a promised land. Okay, we're almost there. Just keep holding fast. No matter what, remember. Remember what God has told you. Remember those dreams. Remember the promises. Remember those words. Remember the scripture. Get into your word. If you're not seeing, if everything that I'm saying on this uh, video is not resonating with you, you need to get into the word of God. You need to get into prayer. You need to seek the Lord because this is from him. And he wants to bless everyone. He wants to bless everyone with abundance, but we have to come into uh, alignment with him and we have to be allowed to be tested and pruned. So I think that's everything that I kind of wanted to have had in my spirit for the last, all of last year. You know, God showed me about the promised land and I'll tell you this, I have already received my promised land. I have received my promised land, but I'm, you know, it's not quite there yet. It, it, it hasn't been fully released to me. I have the promised land, but now I'm feel like I'm kind of stuck. Like, and it, it's kind of sucks because I'm like, oh, I have it. It's right there. It's like right there. It's mine. But until I get another financial uh, release given to me, it's I'm, I'm put on hold. So right now my promised land is like put on hold. It's held up, 
but God is going to, like I said, within the next few months, we're going to see things take place in the political realm. We're going to see financial crisis continue to happen. And for me, last year was uh, I, we, we went into financial crisis altogether with this COVID, with the shutdowns and everything. But I will tell you that God released a, 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 a something more than I could even dream of to me um, within that financial crisis. So I know that we have another level of this financial crisis that's about to take place. And it's going to be very scary for a lot of people. It's going to bring down a lot of people. It's going to humble a lot of people. Because right now, people, when you have money, you have stability, you have power, right? In our society, when you have money, you have stability, you have power, you don't need God, okay? So God is going to take this financial crisis into the next level, and it's going to get tougher for a lot of people, but that is so that they can be humbled and they can realize their need for God. So it's not that God hates them. It's that God wants them to realize their necessity, their need for God, for salvation, for eternal life. Okay. But for those of us who have been pruned and ready and preparing for this and been listening to God and taking heed He's going to bless us, right? He blessed me in 2020 to be able to purchase my promised land. And in 2021, I know that there is another financial breakthrough that's going to take place for me. And those who are like me, those who um, have kingdom mindsets, who uh, are humble, who truly care about, not about numbers, not about popularity, not about fame, but about the people of God, about God's agenda, about God's plan. They're willing to suffer and to take the long route and do the hard stuff to do it the right way. Those people are going to be blessed. So um, he is bringing us into our promised land. Those of you who have, maybe you've uh, got your promised land. Maybe you're like me and you've received your promised land, but you've, you're wondering, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right decision? Everything's frozen up now. I don't feel like maybe I made the wrong choice. Just know that God is saying that you didn't make the wrong choice, that he's going to continue to fund um, what he started, what he has already released to you. It's going to continue to take place. It's going to continue to be built and you already use it for God's purposes, for his people, for his plans, and for uh, the future. And so uh, I just want to share all that with you guys. I hope it blesses you. I hope it brings some confirmation. I hope it brings some comfort, some clarity, some vision of God um, to your life. Uh, share it if you feel like this can bless anybody else. We're in difficult times. It's very difficult. And if you're not tuned into to God, into, into a, your prayer life, you are going to be tossed to and fro. So this information is straight from my prayer life, my relationship with God. Um, and, and so it's going to be fruitful and helpful to us as the body of Christ. So I want to share it. I want to release it. I, I hope that it brings you some stability, some comfort. Um, and I just want to pray right now. I want to pray for this nation. I want to pray also everyone um, hearing my voice that we would just forgive. If there's anything going on in our families, any uh, confusion, any division, any unforgiveness, Lord, I just pray right now for our hearts right now, Lord. I pray that we would just have a heart of forgiveness, even within the body of Christ. If there is some division, some bitterness towards uh, that, that we may have towards another believer, towards a brother or sister in Christ, anything that um, any wrongdoing that was done to us or any wrongdoing that we may have done to them, Lord, I just pray that that all gets resolved, that that all gets wiped clean right now in the mighty name of Jesus, because we cannot move forward effectively with bitterness, resentment, uh, hurt, pain um, in our heart. So I just pray, God, right now that that be removed from off your people in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare that we are free in Christ, that our mental, our mind is, is that of the mind of Christ, that our emotions are stable um, because we have the mind of Christ and we have the peace of Christ. 
that surpasses you know our understanding that we have peace in the midst of this storm and in the midst of this chaos and in the midst of this confusion lord i pray that our ears are open to your word lord i pray that our ears are open to your spirit lord and that we only take in what is true lord that we only take in what you are saying lord and i pray that every lie of the enemy would be removed from us that it, every lying uh, deception that has been implanted in our mind that it would be cut out at its root in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that our eyes would be open to the vision of God I pray that our eyes would be open to your plans Lord for this nation for this world for our destinies for our lives Lord I pray that our eyes would be open Lord I pray that our faith would be stirred and would increase Lord I pray for an increase of faith so that we can fulfill what you're asking of us lord because what you're asking of us is so grand so big so wonderful that we need to get outside of ourselves. that we need greater levels of faith moving forward so i pray that this word release a level of faith that would stir up from deep inside of us lord and have us to do what you're calling us to do. That we would come into agreement with you and your plans, Lord. That we would come into agreement with who we are in Jesus Christ, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord, that we have resurrection power flowing throughout our body and that comes up from our bellies, Lord, a river of flowing water, a water of life that we can release to the nations and release to the world, release to our family, Lord. I pray that the walls of injustice would come down. I declare and decree right now that the walls of injustice are coming down in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that more intercessors, more people of God would come into the ministry of intercession, Lord, that you would place a heaviness upon their heart to come before you in their, in their prayer rooms, Lord, in their cars, wherever they're at, whatever time they have to give, Lord, that they would give you their time, that they would give you their heart, that they would pray and intercede for this nation, that we would understand as the body of Christ, the power our words have, and that you, you love mercy more than you love judgment, Lord, and that you are calling your people to intercede for mercy, for this nation, for this world, Lord. We pray that the captives continue to be set free, Father God. That the those stuck in the sex trafficking, those stuck in um, being trafficked throughout the world, Lord, we pray that those captives get set free and that those, uh, those powers that are holding the people captive would begin to fall, Lord, by the power of the decree of your people, Lord. I pray that we would understand that we are uh, people of authority, of power, and that we have the power and authority through Jesus Christ who dwells richly within us to shift nations, to bring back nations under the power and influence of Jesus Christ. That we have power within us to change things, Lord, to change the things that are taking place right now, Lord. I pray that we would use our voice, we would lift up our voice like a banner, that we would lift up our voice and praises to the Most High God for what He is doing and what He believes for this nation, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I pray that your people would be blessed I pray that your people would love with supernatural love, Lord, not artificial, not not uh, vain love, not surface level love, not superficial love, not what can you do for me type of love, not self-centered love. I pray that they would break free, Lord. I pray that we would all break free from a self-centered mindset, Lord. I pray that we would be healed of those wounds, Lord, that have us to focus on ourself and our hurt and our pain, Lord, but that we would be completely whole and free to love and have patience for those who are lost Lord I thank you for divine strategy I thank you for wisdom I pray that uh, supernatural gifts and 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 fruit would multiply in your people as they 
pursue a relationship with you, Father God, because those things, the fruit, the character, the gifts of the Holy Spirit all come from a relationship, a close, intimate, loving relationship, trust relationship with you, Lord. I pray that any confusion, any doubt, anything, any unbelief would be removed from their minds in the mighty name of Jesus. Those things would be broken off of their minds in the mighty name of Jesus so that they can serve you, so that they can be whole and speak your word and hear your word and be revived, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray all these things. I thank you, Lord, for bringing our households into unity. If you're struggling in your marriage, if you're struggling with your parent relationship, your daughter and mother, daughter, father, um, you know, if you're struggling in your relationships with your family, God is going to bring restoration. He's going to bring restoration, but it starts with forgiveness. It starts with uh getting outside of yourself and asking God to show you what they're struggling with, what they're dealing with, why they are the way they are and how you can love them and break down those walls and barriers that are in their soul, clouding their vision, clouding their soul, clouding their heart, clouding their mind from being able to see the goodness of God. God is going to do it. Um, I also, God just reminded me again about this book. It's about um, committed to uh, conquer. It's about taking territory, um, cities, nations um, back from the enemy and taking it back for the Lord. Um, what God has showed me about this, uh, I started, me and my family started putting Jesus stickers in different territory, our territory. We noticed in our territory, there was a lot of witchcraft. So we started noticing witchcraft stickers being placed on different places in our territory, in our neighborhood. So I bought stickers, Jesus stickers, scripture stickers, and I began to cover those satanic stickers with the Jesus stickers. Um, and what God showed me in connection with this book, um, with taking territory, um, is that what he wanted me to do was to use those stickers to begin spiritual mapping. So you begin to kind of map out, like for me, it's a lot of the Southeast side of Houston and I know where all those stickers are. So if you had a map, you could kind of start connecting one, uh, one place, one territory to another territory and you can start seeing where God um, is taking territory and you'll start being able to pray for that territory. So with those stickers, I just want to share this and maybe um, inspire you to uh, pray about it and maybe get involved as well about spiritual, taking a spiritual territory. But with those stickers, now I can connect one sticker to the other and I know where the territory is being um, marked out. And I'm going to go back with those stickers and anoint them with anointing oil. And then I'm going to just pray, continue to pray over those territories. Um, so I just want to share that with you guys, um, that you can do this too. We can start taking territory. Um, but please, um, live righteously, live obediently. When we go into spiritual warfare and we're not living righteously, we're not living obediently. We open the doors to being attacked. We open the doors to being hurt. We open the doors to, um, taking on sickness and disease and things like that. So be holy, be righteous, um, have a right heart with God. You know, I understand God knows we're not perfect. We're not perfect, but we have to have the right heart and, you know, be really trying, um, to, to do what's right. Okay. So I just want to share that with you as well. Um, with that territory, with, um, marking out with stickers and scriptures and anointing and praying over territory, we, um, and coming together as the body of Christ, we can partner together in doing these things and we can begin praying and developing a prayer network. Um, and that's what God really has on my heart that um, to reach out to you guys, reach out to other believers and build a prayer network where we're um, praying together for territory, um, breaking down strongholds in our uh, cities, uh, nations. <clears throat> so if y'all um, want to partner or know people, or maybe want to share with your church if they pray, um, share this idea so that we can start a prayer network and really start dismantling the, the things of the enemy um, off of our, our cities and taking back our territory for the Lord. 
Um, thank you to everyone who listened. Um, God bless you all. I love you all. Be excited. Be excited for the things to come. Okay. It's going to look shaky. It, there's always going to be warfare. It's always, the enemy is always going to attack when God, there's a big move of God happening, but don't let it discourage you. Don't let it keep you down. Don't let it paralyze you. Don't let it keep you in depression. Just get up, keep fighting. It's not over and God is, there's a breakthrough coming. Um, there's revival coming and you want to be a part of that. You want to be a vessel uh, that God pours out and, and works through to bring revival. Study. Right now it's important to study, to to draw near to God, to build our faith uh, and believe for healings, miracles, signs, wonders, the goodness of God. Um, and he's going to show us his glory. He's going to show us his glory. He's going to fill us with his glory. Um, don't give in, don't give up, don't turn back. Um, don't go to old temptations. Don't give the enemy a toehold, nothing. Keep standing. If you've got to kneel, if you've got to cry, if you've got to lay down, that's fine, but get back up. God bless you, family of God.